Numbers 888-554-5537 if you want to weigh in on any of the stories that we're talking about here on the show. 888-5-KILLER. We'd love to hear from you. I'm Tony Bruschi. Stacey Cole has the day off. Uh, the Alec Murtaugh saga, I'm sure you've been following it along with us, but another uh, tentacle of the saga is the Mallory Beach boat accident case, and that has now kind of unexpectedly come to an end with a settlement uh, that has uh, been granted uh, and agreed to. And we're going to, I'm going to go through the story and then I want to talk about it a little bit uh, in terms of was this justice being served or, I mean, I don't know. There's a lot of things in this case that um, it it seemed Alec found a way out of again. Quite, uh, quite honestly, we're talking about uh, the boat crash that took the life of 19 year old Mallory Beach. Beach's family has lodged a wrongful death lawsuit against Alec Murdoch and Greg Parker, owner of the Parker's Kitchen convenience store chain. As litigations have proceeded, the nexus of the Murdoch family's alleged misconduct and the fatal accident became even more pronounced. The boat crash took place in the wee hours of February 24th of 2019 when Paul Murdoch, in an intoxicated state and underage, this is Paul, this is the one that Alec killed along with his wife, reportedly crashed the boat into a bridge. Tragically, Beach was thrown off the boat. Her body recovered a week later. She had drowned. It was later discovered that Paul had unlawfully purchased alcohol at Parker's using his older brother's ID hours before the crash. And the ensuing legal battle, battle some parties uh, implicated in the Beach's family suit have chosen to settle, including Buster Murdaugh and the estate of May- Maggie Murdaugh. However, Alec Murdaugh and Parker's Kitchen opted to face the trial. Yes, which is set to commence on August 14th. However, not so much anymore. A significant development took place during the recent hearing when the presiding judge contested or consented rather to dismiss the claims against the late Paul Murdaugh estate. The Beach's family attorney, Mark Tinsley, revealed that it was found that there are no concealed assets in Paul's estate. So what should be done? It kind of goes back into the hands of Parker's at this point. Parker's and lawyers representing them presented a motion to sever their case from that of Alex Murdoch's and also sought to transfer the trial venue away from Hampton County. The county is the same location where Alec was previously tried and convicted for the murders of his youngest son and wife. Legal team for Parker's argued that the plaintiff aimed to conjoin their case with Alex in order to incite the jury's anger and to utilize the substantial financial resources of Parker's for compensation. In the intriguing turn of events the judge denied parker's motions for severance and a change of venue after a brief recess mark the second time parker sought a severance initially the court agreed with parker's assessment of the potential prejudice of facing trial with a murdaugh defendant however this decision this decision was later reversed without a clear explanation what then happened is even more surprising Uh, In the events of this case, a settlement was reached. Yes, that's right. A settlement was reached in this case. $15 million is what it is going for. Parker's deciding to settle directly with the Beach family for that $15 million. And they cited this as well. Even if Parker's was found to be 1% guilty of any crimes here they would also have to pay 100 percent of the judgment if this had gone to court with alec murdoch so they decided as a company you know what we're just going to settle this ourselves and end this because us going to court with alec not a good idea so 15 million dollars uh to that family and is this justice I suppose in some ways the store itself denying any wrongdoing uh, stating that we legally sold that. And if you are following the law, you do know Paul and Buster look fairly similar, similar. So it'd be one of those situations where the brother took the ID of the other one, went into the store and bought the liquor. 
beyond looking at the ID, scanning it, and make sure it was legal, which they did, what would you do? Would you go and ask for a birth certificate to match it up? Would you do some... I mean, at some point, you have to look at a convenience store who who did their due diligence and say, look, they did their due diligence. Uh, the true crime happens here where Paul takes Buster's ID or gets it somehow and buys the liquor. That would be on the Murdoch's, not necessarily Parker's convenience store. But when things get so convoluted in this tank of horrors that is the Alec Murtaugh trial. You got to do what you got to do to get your name out of that tank of horrors. And I think that's what Parker's was indeed doing. What would be much more satisfying, though, I'm sure to everyone, is if the check that's going to be cashed didn't say Parker's, but instead said Murtaugh. You're consuming the Hidden Killers podcast. Want more? Start binging on all of our true crime podcasts right now through Apple Podcasts and get an ad-free experience when you sign up to be a True Crime Today Premium Plus member exclusively on Apple Podcasts. More of the Hidden Killers podcast dropping soon. Press subscribe now.